Good morning, folks. It's a beautiful day here this morning here in Monta. It's Tuesday morning. Yesterday, I had a chance to sit down with another YouTuber. He's located in Puerto Viejo here in Ecuador. His name is GM Ace. I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description. We had a nice little interview. He's a good chat. And I'd like for you to check him out, okay? He's a straight shooter, just like me. No BS. He does everything from his cell phone, too, by the way. So go check him out. I did an interview with him. I'm going to share it with you as soon as we come back. And I hope you enjoy. Hey. Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. So, what's going on? <laughs> How's it going? This is GMA. So I never thought I'd ever actually see you in person. What do you have in your glasses here? Is that oh, a... that's actually a coincidence because my aunt came recently, like not recently, like a little bit at the end of the last year. My yeah. aunt and uncle. Yeah. And my glasses are, as you can see, they're not they're not in good condition. Mm -hmm. But uh, they always used to slide off my face. Like, oh, okay. I look down and. Zzz, and then afterwards, uh, like my aunt, like I, I saw that she had those things. I'm like, what are those for? And she's like, oh, they're to keep them stable, like so mm -hmm. that they don't fall off. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, do you have an extra pair? And she just gave me the ones that she had because she's yeah. like, I have a lot more in the States. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So we're doing kind of like a, a double whammy here. We're doing an interview in each other. You are GM Ace. Everybody knows, every, people on my channel know about you. Uh, they're probably going to know a lot more even after this one. You know, uh, you're 100% Ecuadorian, right? That is a... Uh, born, born or where are you from? Well, I'm born in Ecuador, but raised in the United States. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Do you say that on your channel? No, that's actually my, my deep, dark secret. Like for my, like I, it's a, it's, that's my plan to make a future video. Like where I like tell everyone the reality. Cause yeah. a lot of people think I talk about Ecuador poorly cause I, I'm not from here. Mm -hmm. But I'm Ecuadorian, so it's like, it's yeah. Like you, you like it, it. It's just so funny because when it when it, that comes to light, like people are gonna be like, oh, and so, oops, because a lot of people Spoiler think I'm alert. just an American talking poorly about Ecuador. That's not mm -hmm. the reality. I'm Ecuadorian. Just I lived most of my life in the states. Right, right. So the way I found out about you is one day, early on in my channel, I saw there was a mention. And it was from your channel. Now, I remember it scared me because I thought, oh my God, somebody's doing a rebuttal video and they're going to be slamming me, you know. But actually, I don't remember what video it was about. Do you remember what it was about? It was, uh, I still watch that video a few times. Yeah. It's the uh, Should You Give Money to Beggars yes. video. Yeah, that one. That was a good, that was, I think that was a good topic. Uh, and, then, and then I watched your video and I said, wow, this guy's pretty cool, you know. And, I like the, the approach that you take because you're a no-nonsense podcaster, videographer, YouTuber, YouTube creator, you know, kind of like me. I, I don't try to bullshit anybody, you know. So, I, so now, not only are you doing your video channels, but now you want to do a podcast. Yes, sir. Yeah. I want to start uh, what I would call the Ace Talks podcast, Ace Talks. which you might as well take this as like the first episode, mm -hmm. where basically we talk about things here from Ecuador, but not just about Ecuador, also live, like, you know, the comparison. It's very similar to the content in general that we make, just giving a little bit more in depth for everyone who wants to know more about uh, everything. Because in editing, you know, when you make videos, there's a lot that gets left out. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Every day something new happens, the situation, there are some good things, like in life, there are also some bad things. Yeah. So, You live in Puerto Viejo. Yes, sir. Why do you live there? Why? Mm -hmm. Because uh, my grandma, she has a place there. And uh, when we got to Ecuador, that's where we landed. We landed okay. in uh, my grandma's place. And she, like, it's my, so it's basically my mom's place. Yeah. So we were there, and uh, we've just been living there for the longest. Like when I, well, actually, when I landed in Ecuador, I landed and stayed in Guayaquil for a while, but then afterwards I came over here. Mm -hmm. Then I came to, to Puerto Rico. The only reason why I say it is because you're being young and thinking, wow, the beach is right here, and 
you would be more suitable for living on the beach, you know, and hanging out on the beach where all the girls are <laughs> and all this stuff. But there's a lot going on in Puerto Viejo. I had my surgery done there. I think when I start shopping for my car, I'm actually going to go there first because there's dealerships there. It's not a small town, right? It isn't, although a lot of people do see it like that because they, I think a lot of people don't know that Puerto Viejo is the, the capital of Manaví. Yeah. They think Manta is the capital, but it's probably because of the way that uh, the city works. Mm -hmm. Like Manta just seems to have a lot more going for it than Puerto Viejo. It even has a mall. Yeah. Puerto Viejo, the best thing it has in terms of a place indoors to hang out in is the shopping. Yeah. And a lot of people are just like, like I've said it before, you go into shopping, you walk around 20 minutes and like, you're done. You're done. You're yeah. Done. You did a, a, well, you did a live, what do you call that? You, you did a live broadcast from there one time. A live stream. Night. There was, yeah, a live stream. And I actually saw it. And ah, I, the you, one that I did at the park. Yeah, at the park. Yeah. You actually mentioned me in, in, in that podcast when I joined. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's one thing that I haven't done yet is any live, 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 cat, live cast? Live streams. Live stream, okay. Yes. Live stream. Did, didn't you get nervous about doing that? I mean, when you just think about the idea that you're getting a deeper connection with the people who are watching you, like the audience, everyone who, who loves your content. Like it feels better and it, you can even like, a lot of the times as creators, you know, sometimes we're not sure like what exactly would be the best thing to talk about. But when people ask you the questions, it's like, there you go. Like at that moment you can answer them. Of course, in that moment, when I did that live stream, it was to show the, the uh, event that was happening at the park. Yeah. But a lot of the times when I do live streams at home, like I'll have some topics prepared. But I like to hear what everyone has to ask because there's a lot of things that sometimes I don't think about. Like I can think about a lot of things. Like I can just talk about the news that I see in, uh, in the newspaper, yeah. which always at the front of the newspapers, someone died. But um, yeah. uh, I prefer to like listen to questions and answer them because mm -hmm. that way, that's exactly what you know, the person wants. Like that's what they're asking, so that's what they, they want to hear about. Yeah. What made you decide to start your channel? I always really liked the idea of YouTube. Like I remember watching YouTube back when I was a kid, like watching Smosh and like funny videos mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I always had that idea that these are people like in another level, like, oh, yeah. they have to be super extroverted, super cool. And I'm like, but why can't I be like that? And then like you start watching more and there were more YouTubers as the years passed. And then afterwards I started watching educational channels about YouTube and I'm like, it says like you can be a YouTuber because you have a story to tell yeah. that no one knows. and I really felt motivated like that because I was like, I want to motivate people. I want to motivate people to not just come to Ecuador. Like in other social media and Instagram, I talk about workouts. I want to motivate people to like take care of themselves. Yeah. Not necessarily they have to, like everyone has to look like, oh, you're mm -hmm. super strong. But like feel good mm -hmm. the way you are. Like feel healthy. Like don't, don't feel like, sometimes I, I have those moments where like if I eat poorly, I feel like, oh, I feel like I don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. But that's all, that all comes from nutrition. Yeah. Like there's a lot of things that I talk about separate from Ecuador. Mm -hmm. But like in terms of Ecuador, motivate people to come. In terms of life, you know, you can always be better. Mm -hmm. so, you know. have, have you seen the new fitness center at the mall here? I heard about it. I you saw a video of it on, on Facebook, I think. Yeah. But I, I haven't been there because, I mean, this is the first time I've been in Manta this year. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. We've been. I've been trying to connect with you for several months. Trying Since to, October, you know, we've yeah. been trying to to get together to like hang out. It's hard. It's hard when you're so housebound. Like I'm housebound, you know, because I don't have a car yet. But that's going to change soon. So, how many subscribers do you have on your channel now? Right now, I think the last time I checked, it was like at two thousand one hundred and thirty. Uh, it's growing fast. That last video really helped out a lot. I, yeah. I, and I knew it was gonna be a good video because a lot of, like, my best video on my channel was my cost of living video. Yeah. The first cost of living video. And those and did real well. They always, and one of the things that you always learn is to like, if it's something that's, that you know people are looking for, then you have to do something more to like, like may, double down on it because mm -hmm. it's probably more you can talk about about that topic that maybe you didn't do in the first one. Yeah. And there's interest in that. And I was like, I gotta do it. What do you think is a realistic expectation for people to live here cost-wise? You know, um, let's talk about a single person coming here from the States. What is reasonable expectation for how much it costs to live here 
would you say, based on your experience and, you know, your time that you've been here? My analysis, it's just that it varies depending on which city you're in, of course. Yeah, like, of course. if I had to talk about Puerto Viejo, I'd say it's very cheap, very, very cheap. And uh, if you had a salary of, just assume, you had every month, if every month you had $1,000 in Puerto Viejo, you'd be good. Yeah. Like, I keep saying that to myself all the time. Like, with $1,000 a month, like, by myself, I'd be set. Mm -hmm. Like, you just, like, like, with 500, I think you eliminate all the costs of, like, debts that you might have in terms of rent and stuff like that. And then after that, you just have, like, $500 to spend on whatever you want. Yeah. Like, of course, food varies if you want to, like, go. I, I, I don't eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so, like, I only eat one time a day. So it's, like, for me, I, I probably skimp out a little bit on food, but I made those calculations of my cost of living, and like I said, with $1,000, you'd be... And you probably prepare your own food, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't eat out much? Or... Depends. Is that why Goodness you didn't meet me for breakfast this morning? <laughs> I, no, this morning was terrible. This morning, oh, my God, like, how do you wake up to a flat tire? Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> You, you should, I, I took a picture of it, but it was yeah. in, it's in the other phone that yeah, I have. Yeah, your primary mode of transportation is your motorcycle, My right? motorcycle. Yeah. I don't even take taxis anymore unless it's with my parents to go to the shopping. Yeah. Because we can't all fit on the motorcycle, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So when you say the shopping, you're talking about a mall, right? Or is it a mall? <laughs> it's, a, like, it's called El Shopping. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and it is, it, it's a mall. Yeah. It's, it's literally a mall, but it's like... If I had to make a comparison for my, in my life in, in Florida, like we have here in Manta, there's the Mall de Pacifico. Mm -hmm. That to me is like the Sawgrass Mall, right. which is the big mall that is in, in Florida. Right. And the, the shopping is like the, I don't remember what it's called, but there's like this super small mall that uh, is close in, in plantation. We have one of those here. Live. It's called Paseo Mall. Probably like that. It, Isn't that it, it's called? It's they, Paseo Shopping. Yeah, they say when here, when you want to go there, you tell the taxi driver you want to go to the shopping. Yeah. And that's where they go. And also the big corral supermarket is right by our our Paseo Mall. It's a two-story mall, straight. You know, it's a nice mall, you know. Don't have a McDonald's. Do you have a McDonald's in Puerto Viejo? We only have a Dunkin' Donuts in the shopping. Really? Yeah. Like, that's the, like, other than KFC, which is everywhere, like, yeah. KFC and Dunkin' Donuts are the only... I guess you could say American brands that yeah. I've seen over here. Other than that, there was a there was like two of the three years when we had a subway in Puerto Viejo, not in the shopping, it yeah. was in the, in Plaza de Sol. But uh, then afterwards, it didn't work out. It's yeah. just people aren't looking for that here. Like I, I that's well, why. I am. I, yeah, but like I, I but that's the thing. <laughs> it, yeah. It's so niche. Like yeah. it's that's the, that's the problem with with uh, setting up some kind of like super big restaurant chain mm -hmm. from the states. It's that it wouldn't thrive here because people here aren't looking for those the, the price value yeah. that those chains offer. Like even Burger King and McDonald's only survive because they're in Guayaquil and Quito, yeah. big cities that have big amounts of people where you can actually like find people who want those mm -hmm. kinds of things. But over here, people want to spend three dollars on food maximum four. Mm -hmm. Like it, like I also said, uh, I talked about the platos a la carta. Mm -hmm. Like that's. For people here, that's uh, that's splurging. Eight dollars, ten dollars. If you're going over that, that's like whoa. Yeah. So you you actually have a, a day job here. You actually have another job, real job. I don't know. I'm, it's not fair to say a real job because everything is real. But what what do you what is your vocation? Let me put it that way. Uh, my vocation here, the thing that I do is teaching. Teach. I'm an English teacher. Uh, English as a second language teacher. Okay. Yes. Right. But uh, I used to teach at a high school and also at the English Academy, English Institute. But now I only teach in English Institute. Like, so speaking of that, okay, this is a good question. I, if I say so myself, why, you know, when Americans, North Americans that are coming here, we, we preach to them all the time, learn Spanish, learn Spanish, learn Spanish. And we come here, North Americans come here, and we say, why don't the Ecuadorians want to learn English? You know, well, they do. They teach it in all the schools. You're teaching it, you know. But my question is, it seems like they take it in school, but my perception is that once they've taken it in school, just like when I took Spanish in high school, I never wanted to speak Spanish. You know, and I, sometimes I get the, the feeling that the Ecuadorians here 
that take English classes in school, they take it to get through school and then they don't want to speak it. What are your thoughts about that? That is probably the, the most, like, I guess, direct answer to the question. Like, yeah, you're done with it. But the, the, the thing is, when they go to the university, the university exceeds the students to have a B1, B2 level in order to graduate. But there's a lot of, uh, I guess you could say help. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, I don't want to say corruption, but yeah. help. Where, uh, you know. I'll say it. Well, you know. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I know. Well, uh, let the audience you know, figure out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's basically, uh, they'll the find a it. way to yeah. like pass. Yeah. without necessarily learning the language sure, sure. and it happens everywhere and a lot of people the reason and I've talked to students about this all the time like to try to motivate them like you know you should learn English you can go to another country you can meet girls from yeah. like the states like because they're always like when the girls come here like oh they're so beautiful mm -hmm. oh American girls are beautiful right I'm like yeah they are but I'm like but they're but when I try to convince them using that logic they're just like we're never gonna need English because yeah. they the mentality of a lot of people here is that they're never leaving the country. Yeah. They'll see the videos, they'll watch the Instagram, you know, and be like, oh, I want to go to this place in the world. But the thought is, since I'm never going to go there, what do I need to know English for? Mm -hmm. And then that's backed up even more when they see people who go to Florida, because this is just the, the example that I know because I've seen it a lot in Florida, and the people who I know that live in Florida, some people who know, live in Florida, they don't know English. Yeah. They live in Florida and Miami, and they don't need to know English. Right, right. And since they don't need to know English, they, mm -hmm. they never like practice it. So they bring that over here. They say, you don't need to know English. I don't know English and I live in the States. Mm -hmm. So then why would someone going, like why, why would someone be convinced by that? Like, yeah. you know, you, you need English to live in the States. No, there are people who live in the States who don't know English. Yeah. Why is it that here in Ecuador, more businesses, like say the grocery store, why don't they put up translation signs like we do in the States? They, they have English and then they'll have Spanish underneath at a lot of places. Not, it's not everywhere, but I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the reason why, why I'm asking this. I have a very specific reason. I went to the Mega Maxi one day, and I've mentioned this on my channel before. I went to the Me Mega Maxi one day, bought a basket full of groceries, got to the checkout line, and they said it was cash only because the point of sale system was down. Couldn't use a debit card, a credit card or anything. And I thought the first thing that came to my mind is why wasn't there a sign at the entrance? <laughs> Something that like, gave you a heads up. You know, right? Yeah, you know, a heads up, like cash only today, you know? And I thought it would have been, even if it's, they did in Spanish and in English, that would be so cool, you know? But they don't do that, you know? Why is that? <laughs> If I had to quote the words of a friend of mine who is from Quito, he lives over here. I won't say anything because I don't want anyone to flame him someday if they ever meet him. But like, he said it himself, it's, it's the lack of preparation of Ecuadorians themselves. There's this mentality that an Ecuadorian will, and this is, like, like, like I said at the beginning, like, I'm from Ecuador and like, I have Ecuadorian friends. I lived in the States, of course, so I consider myself more American, yes, but mm -hmm. even my Ecuadorian you're still, friends. You're still Ecuadorian, yeah. Yeah, I'm still Ecuadorian, and yeah. I have Ecuadorian friends who say this. Yeah. Like, it, it's the mentality of, like, it doesn't matter. Like, they're, they're not, they, there's no need to do it. Like, there's no preparation for if a situation like that happens. So, the, 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 just putting the example that you put up now. The system went down, now, yeah, you know, we'll just tell them when they get here. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, oh, you know, we, let, let's set up a, something so that they know, so that they're not, like, oh, desperate at the moment of, like, which is bad because yeah. once you get to the line, what if your only form of payment was a card? Like you just like, you just leave everything there and like yeah. you just go because you didn't even know from the moment you came in. But that's just the thing. It's, it's the lack of preparation, the lack of wanting to do mm. it. And it's, it, it's that mentality that my friend, like not me, like my friend is saying like, it, it kills the ability of an Ecuadorian because like there's a lot of potential. But like the same fact that there's just that like, we're good with just this. Yeah. Like that kills the, the, the possibility of Ecuador just being that much more. Right. Well, and the reason why it really was a, kind of an issue for me is because we're told don't carry cash around. I mean, it's a cash based society, but don't carry a lot of cash around because of petty crime and all that oh, kind of man. stuff, which by the way, has not really been a problem for me <laughs> since I've been here. But that was my, you know, that was my rationale was I don't have, 
eighty dollars in cash on me. I didn't that day, you know. I figure I had a hundred dollars worth of groceries. Well, you know, I, I I didn't have enough money to pay for it. I knew I didn't. I think I had forty bucks on me. So, but that's what that's what angered me more than anything else is why why didn't I know coming in? You know, so I could have gone to the ATM machine and got some more money or something. Exactly. You know, and then it's sad because it kills like business because you that. It's like the, the law of like, I, I don't know if that's how business always works, but if you can give an alternative, mm -hmm. why not give it? Yeah. Like if you don't give the alternative, what do you do? I right. can't buy here, I'll take my business somewhere else. Right, right. So how long has it been since you came back to Ecuador from the States? Like 10 years. 10 years. More yeah. than that, but like, I don't like to count after 10. Okay. It, to me, it's like 10 is like, it's already been a long yeah, time. Yeah. Like I've been here long enough to understand how things work. I still don't speak Spanish great. I just enough to be able to communicate, enough to understand everything everyone's saying, just pronunciation. Yeah. A lot of people are like, you're not from here. Yeah. yeah. So. You don't, you don't have a wife, do you? Are you married? You're no. not married, are you? Super single. You have no girlfriend? Sadly. Oh. Hear that, girls? <laughs> I'm available, <He's> available. ladies. <laughs> just let me know. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of beautiful young girls in Ecuador, especially here on the coast. In Puerto Viejo, like that's uh, when you were mentioning the situation with Manta, like, you know, mm -hmm. being in the beach and the girls here in the beach. In Puerto Viejo, they say like the prettiest girls in Puerto Viejo. Yeah. And I like, since I've been in Puerto Viejo for the time mm -hmm. I've been there, you yeah, I have noticed. Yeah. Good, good. Beautiful, beautiful girls. So what's next for you? You're, you've got a good start going on your, your channel, which by the way, I'm going to put all that information about your channel in the description. So you got... You got a good head start on that. You're making progress. And maybe it's too early, but what's ahead? What are you going to do next? I think you mentioned something about a podcast. Oh, for sure. Uh, I want to make podcast episodes, make this like a, maybe a, I guess it would be bi-weekly. Every two weeks, make an episode, talk about different topics here in Ecuador, uh, let everyone know what's going on. Because the, the only thing I'm conflicted on with that is that if I were to go in depth with the things that are going on, there's gonna be a lot of bad stuff that some people might not wanna hear, but it's things you have to know about because that's just what's happening mm -hmm. here. There's a lot of good stuff to talk about too. I wanna take trips to different cities. In February, I'm in the process of planning a trip to Cuenca uh, because I do wanna record a video in You've Cuenca. Never been there? I've been there twice for football okay. games, oh, but it's like a day, I spend a day there, you know, you get yeah. there, you just kind of like walk around, eat something, and then football game, mm -hmm. and then straight back home. Not even a shower. It's just, didn't get, yeah. oh my God, it's so a, the you worst. You didn't really get a chance to really experience Cuenca. I only got like the, let's just say like two hours of exploration. Okay. That's why I even yeah. have some cool photos where like we're posed up on this wall yeah. that has like graffiti in the back, and it's just really cool. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I, and I, what I noticed about the city is that it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. just... I didn't get to truly experience Cuenca the way I would have wanted to experience Cuenca, like for a video. But at that time, I wasn't thinking about video making. That yeah. was before, like, the pandemic around yeah. 2019. So, what gave you the idea to do a video channel? What what started that? Uh, the idea was basically. So, basically, in other words, I'm saying why? Why? Yeah. Because I wanted to be someone who who could motivate people. Like, I had a lot of thoughts at the beginning. Like, I could, a lot of my friends always say, oh, you get good, good advice, you're very motivational, you're super positive. Um, and, uh, like, I also knew, like, I know English and I also know Spanish. So at the beginning, I thought I could, teach, uh, I could teach English in Spanish to people who wanted to learn. Like, I know it's kind of contradictory, mm -hmm. but it's like the explanations are given in Spanish so that they understand, like, what you have to, like, do to make the sentences in English. And obviously, of course, using examples in English. But that idea quickly felt like it wasn't for me because even as a teacher, like we talked about how that's my job, that's in theory my vocation, but it doesn't feel like the thing that I want to do the rest of my life. Yeah. Like I do kind of want to teach, but not exactly English. Like I want to teach people to like, you know, be like, believe in themselves more, uh, take care of themselves, teach people how to like be fit without necessarily having to buy the, all the fitness mm -hmm. gear, uh, teach people that like, you know, things about the country, like teach different things, not exactly just focus on teaching English. Mm -hmm. I like it when students really like to learn, yeah. but sometimes it's like, that's not the thing for me forever. Yeah, yeah. If somebody were to call you up and say, hey, Ace, 
uh, tell me the truth about crime. Is it really a problem there? What would you tell them? If it were like, if they wanted the truth with no, you know, roundabouts, with no me like saying, oh, but this, I'd say it's pretty bad. Like if I have to go out all the time in my motorcycle because I'm scared of walking to, to any place, mm -hmm. it's because it's bad. Yeah. And it's not like I've been robbed constantly. Like I've only been robbed twice. And once I actually got away from it, the, that was just because they mainly focused on my brother at that time. Mm -hmm. I'm not happy about it, but I'm happy I didn't get robbed. And my brother didn't either because I went and fought back. Right. But like the one time I, I actually did get robbed, the scariest experience ever because like you just don't know what to do. Yeah. And like fighting isn't the solution because unfortunately it's not like in the States, I was just talking to an American friend about this. Like in the States, you got a way to defend yourself. Over here, robbers know you don't have anything to defend yourself with. So it's just like you're easy pickings and the police don't do anything about it either. So it's like, like I, I was literally listening to, uh, to another experience about like something about that as well, where a group of people caught a robber going into a house. They caught him, they took him out, they called the police, the police came, they took him, but they said, if the owner of the house, because the, the owner wasn't there, mm -hmm. if the owner doesn't report it as a crime, we gotta let this guy go. Yeah. And he was in the house. There's camera footage of this man, yeah. and it's like, they gotta let him out. Like, yeah. what? We, it makes no sense. You can't walk around the streets because you're scared that you might get your phone robbed. Some people do it anyways, and I don't know how they mm -hmm. do it. I, I'm not gonna lie and say, oh, you're not gonna find anyone on the streets with their phone out. Right. But like, it's so little the people who do it that like when you do see someone doing it, you actually wanna stop and tell them, don't do that, man. You're gonna, something could happen to you, be careful. Yeah. But like, some people risk it. I guess yeah. they just know the neighborhood. They just feel like nothing's gonna happen. Right, right. But it's like, I wouldn't, I would say be very cautious in terms of crime. It's, uh, it's not good. And I'm just talking, and right now what I'm saying is just more on the superficial level. Yeah. Because there, I could go deeper into it, and it's, it's bad. Yeah. Okay, so we got Gracie sitting here. <laughs> Gracing us with yeah. her presence. With her presence. Her name is Gracie, but I call her the little queen because of what she thinks she is. I don't know if she's actually in the camera or not. Yeah, there's her head right there. Just she's there. right below the mark. <laughs> so... Uh, on the podcast, okay, I'm very interested in that. So, the um, I, I, I everybody has their different reasons for wanting to do a podcast or a YouTube channel. Some people do YouTube channels for the revenue. Some people, like myself, I do it just it gives me something to do. I'm able to help people because I don't know if you've ever noticed. I don't give advice. I never give advice. The only advice I ever do give is seek the advice of counsel, you know, seek the advice of, of a, a professional, professional, someone, yeah, somebody that knows what they're talking about. And, and on podcasts, podcast is a little different medium because there's obviously no video involved. And, but I think, and I'm going to be curious to know what your thought is on this. To me, the real challenge of doing a podcast is how am I going to keep the attention of the, the listener? Notice I didn't say viewer, of course. the listener. So what? How? How are you going to do that? How are you going to keep your listener listening to you? I always think, and this was something that I was going to mention earlier about uh, the whole fact of why people sometimes watch us as as creators. We can be very informative. We can be very detailed with the things that we know. But what? And what a person, a listener, and it's a viewer, someone who is who's there for you, is there for, is for you. Yeah. So it's very important that you, whatever you do, you're yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you, you have to make sure in order, like that's what I want to like focus on in mind is that the people who are coming to watch me, it's because they love what I have to say. They love me and they understand what I have to say. And obviously I'm not just going to talk about myself. Like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. I, uh, I have my house, I have my parents, I have my brother. No. We're gonna talk about topics that are interesting as well, but set in the way and from a perspective of someone who's lived here for this amount of time. Right. This, is, this is something I said before. Everyone's story is their own story. Yeah. Your life is your life, my life is my life, and we have not lived the same life, so what you tell me about your life, I'm really curious about it because mm -hmm. I've never lived through that. 
Like, you have things that you've done in your life that I've never done, and yeah. vice versa. Maybe I've done things in my life that you've never done. So we all have a story to share. Yeah. And I'm hoping that my story, every time I turn on my podcast, is going to be something that the person who's listening is going to enjoy. Okay. And obviously being told by B, being myself. Yeah. Were you here during the earthquake? Yes, sir. That was hard. Is that worth talking about? It's, what, what was it like for you? I mean, the, if we talk about the actual moment of the earthquake, I think I got it a lot less bad than mm, other people did. Yeah. Because obviously we can talk about the extreme of people who died. I mean... Yeah. That happened. It's not something you can just say, oh, no, it didn't happen. Imagine it didn't happen. No, that did happen. But I was uh, inside uh, in a chifa in, you know, Chinese food place. Mm -hmm. And um, I was with my brother. We went out to eat. And uh, it just started rumbling. And, you know, when you have, like, when you're in Ecuador, you notice that it's normal for, like, mm -hmm. things to rumble. Yeah. But, like... It took a lot longer than we expected, and the rumbling started getting harder, and that's when we were like, I told my brother, get up, we got to get out. Yeah. And we got out, and the first thing my mind shifted to, the first concern was my parents. Yeah. Like, I didn't even, like, I, I saw my motorcycle on the ground, and I just picked it up, but I was like, my parents. And since I was close, I went running to my parents' house, and I keep telling everyone the same story, because on my way to my parents' house, like, well, to my house, you know there's like moments in horror movies mm -hmm. where everything turns like like red, like you know the sky is red and everything. That's what it looked like that, that night. Like the sky was red and like I was running and like when I passed by because at the time there was a gym on the street like in, in one of the areas and I, and I used to go to that gym. And I was like, is everything all right? And they were like, yeah, yeah. So I kept running. Like after that I just kept going. And when I reached home, like my concern was since my house is so close to Plaza del Sol, that if, and the plaza's big, if the plaza just decided to come out onto my house, like, I mean, my mom was the one at home. My dad was in the business, and I'm, I'm sure he could get out a lot faster, which is my business, mm -hmm. like, next to my house. But, like, I was concerned about, like, what would happen, like, you know, the, the possibility. But when I got home and the plaza was intact and my dad was outside and everyone was, like, outside, and I'm like, and my mom, he's like, you know, she's fine, too. I'm like, peace. Like, like, at that moment, the things that were, like, were immediate to me, peace. Okay. But then after that came the concern for my friends, for everyone else who I knew, like, what happened, like, because there was no power. There was a, I think we had power after, like, two days, maybe, and that's only because my dad is persistent. He's very good at, like, talking to people, getting connections, and, like, since we're on one of the main streets, he was like, we need light over here because yeah, this yeah, is the main exactly. street. Like, yeah. he got light back on the streets really fast. Yeah. But during that time, it was like, it was scary to go to sleep. Yeah. Because, do like... You, do, moving fast forward today, to today, do you think earthquakes is a reason for not coming here? No. Yeah. I think uh, unless we decide, unless Ecuador decides to, like, get the, the worst earthquake ever, which I think I remember once seeing something that it kind of, like, traumatized me because one of those earthquakes are the ones that, like, the earth swallows you up. Yeah. Like, if something like that were to happen, then I'd be worried. Yeah. But, like... For now, I mean, the, the, the Puerto Viejo earthquake was bad. It just, it wouldn't be the reason why I would say, hey, don't come live here. Because think about it, that was in 2016. It's, we're 2023, and we haven't had another earthquake like mm -hmm. that again. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, you have to worry every year that an earthquake like that's going to happen. Right. You can have it in your mind. Have an, a, a, uh, an escape plan ready if it were to happen. Make sure your house was constructed by people who took constructing the house seriously. Mm -hmm. Because that's what a lot of people said happened in the city. A lot of the houses were just constructed with like poor materials, quickly done uh, by people who didn't know what they were doing, and that's why they just came down, and and that's why people died. Yeah. But like that's why you got to find out was this house constructed? Is it safe? Like, if you have everything in order, your only concern is the moment that the earthquake happens, make sure to get out of your house. Yeah. 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 Uh, if if somebody from the states called you up and said, Ace. I, what is the most important thing for me to know about moving to Ecuador? Good or bad? What's the first thing that pops up in your mind? The most important thing? Yeah. Uh, it, like, the first thing that came into my mind was money. Like, just yeah. make sure that you're not overconfident. Because, like, I can tell you, uh, Quito was, I think, the, the most... Well, yes, it was the... No, I think it was either Quito or Guayaquil. In the most expensive uh, case mm -hmm. study that I made in my video, 
It was the most expensive one, like almost like let's just say from one thousand eight hundred to two thousand dollars. But don't get overconfident with that value, yeah. because this year everything is one thousand eight hundred, two thousand dollars. But next year, it could be two thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. It could be like you never know. Yeah. The price of food, gas, the rent, everything could just shoot up, and it's like so. Make sure you come, not taking into consideration the value of the year that you you wanted to come but when you actually come. Mm -hmm. Like just whatever year you come after, make sure, add like an extra 200 to $500 to that value so that way you know that it's not, you're not coming unprepared. Yeah. yeah. It's better to, to have leftover money than to like come here and like, oh, I don't have yeah, enough. Yeah, not money. have enough, yeah, absolutely. What do you think about the future of Monta? You think Monta's got a good future? Oh, Monta's got a great future. Yeah. I heard about the park that they're, they're building here in Monta. I'm like, yeah. and I, I don't know if it's going to be better than the Puerto Viejo parks. I think they said it was going to be bigger, the it's biggest big, park. huge, yeah. So it's like, and I think there's a part that's already like, you can go check it out. Yeah, part of it's completed. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, just think about it. Like once it's complete, complete, yeah. Puerto Viejo completely changed when they had uh, the two parks. Yeah. One, because it restored trust in the mayor, which I think was super important because no one trusted the mayors mm -hmm. in the city. But two, because it gave people another thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, the shopping is like, was the only thing to do because the shopping has the movie theater. Yeah. And then after that, you would just say like, well, I can walk around at night. I can go out and drink with my friends. But now we have a park that has various things that you can do and not just indoor things, outdoor, outdoor things. things. Yeah. So once the park is constructed here, it's not going to be like, world changing but it's going to definitely change the structure of like what people do it's not just going to be the beach it's going to be oh you can go to the park yeah. or you can go to the beach yeah. or you can go to the mall you came right by that park on your way in probably I mean, yeah i didn't see Did it you though. see the pole with the big tuna no i didn't Did see you that see the big tuna that thing's as big as this apartment i don't know i didn't see it i just like when i get you came, it, I, you came right by it <laughs> i don't know i came into the city and i was like i was worried because all the times that I've come yeah. to Manta, the first thing I always see is the ocean. Yeah. And I didn't see that. I was like, I just came into the more industrial part. And I'm like, I probably came in the entrance that's just like, you know, the yeah. more city yeah. part and not the, the beach yeah. part. So I'm like, I hope I don't get lost. And I didn't get lost. It, it was so, at Christmas time, it was all lit up because the, the first part that they completed, it's beautiful. They got a bunch of statues in there and, and man, it's, it's beautiful. It's pretty. I haven't actually been in it. I've been by it. But... I, I, you know, I recently had foot surgery too, and so I'm a little limited on how much I can walk. So I haven't been, I haven't been down there yet. You know, so you have any questions for me? Well, yeah, but uh, I was gonna say maybe we could like uh, split it and like yeah, we could do that sure. for like right now the the okay. sort of my episode for the podcast. Okay. So I don't know because we just did like the I guess the interview to me, which yeah. is fine. I, I yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. So so. I'll go ahead and cut this video off because this is GMAs and please look at the description for all the information about his channel and how to find it. Go to it, please subscribe and give him a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up. If you like this video, if you don't like it, bite me. And, <laughs> you know, and, and have a great day. Have an we'll, excellent day. We'll see you on the next one. For sure. All right. Hello? It's Megan. Megan who? The one with all the awesome stuff for you. What kind of stuff? <laughs> Coffee, pussy, and juice? And cigarettes? Next door, honey. Next door. <laughs>